I might not be where I want to be in life right now, but I'm definitely not where I was. See, as I walk with God, I'm learning how to be grateful for what I have. Because every time I lose, I gain double. See, when you remain faithful to the Most High God during your season of trial and tribulation, everything you lose, God will restore you with much greater than what you lost. But sometimes it be things that God don't restore, like friendships or relationships with loved ones. And it took me a while to understand that whenever God takes something out of your life, it's for a reason. And if I be honest, it's been times when I felt like the walls was caving in on me because I was at war with depression, thinking to myself that I was alone with no one to talk to. But one day I called upon his name, Lord Jesus. And there he was right there to save me when I thought it was all over. That was the motivation I needed to keep going. Now here I am today preaching the gospel and now I realize the things that God took out of my life was for this moment right here because he was awakening something in me that I didn't know I had without even knowing that what I was going through would help so many people. Because on that day when God told me to start preaching the gospel just so happened to be in the most critical moment in my life, I almost threw in the towel. See, around this time, that's when I got laid off from my job. I was facing homelessness with my mom and sister, and even my sister got laid off from her job, and we nearly lost everything, including friends and family. But with every relationship that I lost, including personal possessions, I gained with Lord Jesus. So that's why today I want to take the time out to thank you all as well, because with your words of encouragement and your daily support, you helped me see a brighter day when I thought nothing was working, but when y'all find these videos and you say it helped you and it brightened up your day to see another day, that's all the support I need and that's a blessing. I greatly appreciate it because that kept me in this race. That's why for me, likes, views, shares could never amount to a kind word because a kind word is priceless. So today I pray that if you feel like you're back against the wall and you feel trapped like you can't escape, I want you to do me a favor. Call upon Jesus. Call on his name without ceasing. Speak life into your situation. Let go of worry and truly accept him into your heart. And I'm speaking this from experience. God truly changed my life when I learned how to let go. And by doing so, you will become a part of a new family that will never perish but have everlasting life. Because now we're family. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family. There's people in this world that believe and there's people in this world that don't believe in God. And there's also people in this world that's lost that don't know what to believe in. But whatever category you fall in, we all can agree that good and evil exists in this world. And sometimes you might ask yourself, why does bad things happen to good people? Well, my mama always told me, it's not how you leave this world, it's how you live before you leave this world. So it boils down to what type of decisions will you make throughout the course of the day, because free will can be a gift or a curse. See, God give all of us free will, and the actions that you take throughout life falls under two categories, good or evil. Because since the beginning of time, God gave us the opportunity to choose life over death. And now we have that same opportunity through Lord Jesus. Now keep in mind, whatever you do after watching this video could be the best or worst decision you ever made in your life. So my question for you is what will you do with your free will? I love y'all. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a story you're going to want to hear. I pray this message bless you. So I was on Facebook reading this story about this guy that decided to have a barbecue. So he told his daughter to go gather their friends and family, and that's what she did. Now she's walking down the street yelling, there's a fire, there's a fire, can you help me and my dad? And nobody came to her rescue, not even neighbors that they have known for years. So she continued to say that, then finally people came to help. So the people that showed up began to feast with the dad and the daughter, celebrating. After everybody left, the dad was stunned. So he turned to his daughter and he asked her, why come nobody showed up like friends and family? Because the people that was there, he didn't recognize them. So the daughter said, those who came out of their homes came to help us put out a fire, not celebrate and party with us. So those are the ones who deserve our generosity and hospitality. Moral of the story, we like to surround ourselves with people that we're familiar with because we feel like they have our best interests at heart. 
So we surround ourselves with friends and family, thinking these are the people that's meant to be with us. And people like to be around when you're winning. You know, they like to celebrate the victory. But if they're not willing to help you when you're at your lowest point, when you're struggling, if they're not willing to give you a helping hand, then why should they celebrate with you on your victory day? See, everybody like to celebrate the victory, but can you celebrate during the struggle? That's food for thought. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Whatever you've done in your past or whatever you're doing right now that got you in a dark place in life and you may feel like giving up, I just want to let you know that God loves you. Lord Jesus love you, and so do I. Because I understand that it's been a hard journey, and sometimes you just need someone to talk to. So I believe God laid this message on my spirit so I can relay this message to you. God sees your tears, and he feels your pain. And you may feel like a terrible person, but God sees who you are on the inside. And that's a loving and caring, beautiful individual that only wants to please him and do what's right. You may have done some things that's not pleasing to God, but you're not alone because we all have, and that's why I'm here for you today. So today I pray that you find peace in the presence of God and know that you've been forgiven for all your sins through Lord Jesus, and now it's time that you forgive yourself. So until next time, I love y'all. In Jesus' name, amen. The reason why it's so important for you to stay on the path that the Heavenly Father chose for you is because what they're doing over there may not work for you. See, if you begin to focus too much on what other people are doing, that can cause you to do stuff that the Heavenly Father didn't call you to do. Don't stretch yourself thin by trying to keep up with others. One of the things that we must understand about purpose and doing the Heavenly Father's will is there's different members to the body of Christ. Some are called to be musicians. Others are called to preach. But sometimes the Heavenly Father may just call you to speak to someone that's having a bad day and they just need someone to talk to. Don't think less of yourself because of what other people have or what they're doing because you are important and you mean something to the Heavenly Father and we all have a purpose. But the most important part is obedience because that's what makes the body of Christ. The race isn't given to the swift because the Heavenly Father don't care how fast you are. The only thing he cares about is that you finish what he called you to do. And the only way to finish strong is to have faith in Lord Jesus. So if you feel like giving up today, remember these words. There is a reward for those who endure until the end. Stay focused on the Heavenly Father by having faith in Lord Jesus. I pray this bless you in Jesus name. Amen. The Heavenly Father, today I need your help more than ever because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's an individual out there that's battling with temptation today, Lord. So in the name of Jesus, I rebuke any lustful spirit or demonic attacks that this individual may be suffering. Beat that evil spirit back into submission. Free them from any evil thoughts that may cross their mind. I know you had the power to do it, so may you give them strength to overcome whatever they may be facing. May you allow them to grow stronger in their spirit so they can resist the flesh. I pray for this individual that they continue to reach out to you, Lord. Cry out to God. Continue to pray without ceasing because we serve a faithful God. For it is written, he promised to never leave nor forsake you. And he promised to love those who draw near to him. We have the victory through Lord Jesus. So continue to fight with prayer and allow God to win the battle. As it is in heaven, shall it be done on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. They would have treated you better if only they knew the plans that God has over your life. The words say, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due time, he may exalt you. See, they thought you was being lazy when God said have patience, but really you was waiting for his timing. Because if only they knew that God was preparing you for the position that they currently hold, they would have treated you better. But because of their pride, they continue to treat you terrible. But because of their pride, they continue to treat you like you wasn't a person for the job. See, God gave them an opportunity to treat you better. Now God is saying, move over because it's your turn. God resist the proud, but give more grace unto the humble. So be careful how you treat people because you never know what God is doing in somebody's life. What you consider the least of them could be the one God chose to do his will because they didn't try to exalt their self. They waited on God's timing. Fear will keep you from the very thing God called you to do. It destroys opportunity and keeps you from walking through the door that God has placed before you. Maybe it's because you feel unworthy or you feel ashamed because of past mistakes and failures. 
1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. God doesn't hold you to your past. He cares about your present moment and your future. That's why Lord Jesus laid his life down thousands of years ago, because he had us in mind. Throughout the Bible, there's so many people that wouldn't have made it if God didn't forgive them for their past. We serve a forgiving God, and even when times get hard, fear not because God is with you. God is ready to open a window of opportunity, giving you a chance to show people who he really is. Who are born to help people have a better understanding of God. So get ready because God been ready for you. Step into your destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. The devil hates when we pray because he know there is power in prayer. That's why the scripture tell us to pray without ceasing. Pray nonstop, no matter what's going on in your life. Just pray and talk to the Heavenly Father. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you with a humble spirit in hopes that you receive my request. Let your will be done, not mine, Lord. Because the plans that you have over my life are way greater than my own. Continue to lead me on the path of righteousness as I grow closer to you, dear Heavenly Father. Teach me your ways. Help me become a better listener, dear Heavenly Father, so that I may be obedient to your instructions. You are my strong tower in these time of troubles. So it's you that I will continue to run to as I seek refuge in these dark times. May you heal the sick. May you heal the wounded that's going through turmoil in this dark time, dear Heavenly Father. I know you have the power to do it because you showed us with Lord Jesus on the cross. You raised them on the third day. You showed us that we have the victory and I'm going to continue to pray and I'm going to continue to make the devil mad and I'm going to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. I know you have the power to do it in Jesus name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.